Hey, welcome back everybody again, uh, Ryan here. So just did a video on our uh, part two of our tri-pack rebuild, or not tri-pack, but carrier APU rebuild. So I got tri-pack on the brain for some reason. Uh, so we got a carrier here that we're rebuilding. We're gonna turn and we're gonna gut it. We're gonna turn it into a manual analog system, just simple AC system. So if you're interested in that series, you can check out our uh, carrier APU rebuild. Um, so why I'm doing this, why I got this carrier apart here, and I've got my tri-pack, Thermo King tri-pack back there. I took the cover off of it. Um, I wanted to talk about the differences between the two makes, the two models. So this is a Carrier Comfort Pro here, and they're, they look the same from the outside, but there, there's some major differences and advantages and disadvantages. And uh, so I wanted to talk about those, and at the end I want to kind of wrap up and talk about which one I would probably go with and, uh, and why. Because um, like I said, there's one in particular that I see some major flaws in and some stuff I don't like. Um, so then we'll talk about that at the end. So I'll get right into the uh, the carrier here. Just like I said, it's a comfort. It's an older one. This uh, the engine off of this is a 2006 model year engine, so Kubota engine. So they're basically they're both both the Thermo King and the carrier. They're uh, this is a Kubota engine, two cylinder diesel that's in this. It is a What's it rated at? 7.2 kW, so I'm not uh, exactly sure how many horsepower that is. But uh, they're roughly the same. The uh, Thermo King has a Yanmar diesel two cylinder, about the same size, roughly. So the main difference between a Carrier and a Thermo King tri pack, and a lot of people just say tri pack, so Thermo King is tri pack, Carrier is Comfort Pro. So the Carrier here doesn't have an AC compressor outside. The Carrier is basically just a little diesel generator for the most part. And it's just got an alternator down here at the bottom, which is a 6KW, 6,000 watt alternator. And then inside you have a, basically a heat electric heat pump unit, because this, this puts out, you know, 110, 120 power, AC power, just like in your house. So, and it's got a little 60 amp alternator up here that I guess could charge your batteries and whatnot or on that, uh, you know, on your truck. So. It's a mechanical engine, which I like, so there's not a lot to it. Um, one of the things I don't like is they, they got the APU control unit, this little computer. It's outside and all the elements. Um, and again, this, like I said, this is an AC alternator down here. Um, and it's outside. This is, look at all the dirt on this. So, you, and, and as we talked about in a lot of my videos, uh, electrical components, wiring, copper, and all that, that stuff and road grind and salt and water do not mix. So, and this is down here on the bottom of this unit, and it's this, na this is the nasty, nasty unit. Like I said, it's like, then the last video, this thing looks like it's been at the bottom of a pond for a couple years. And I know it hasn't, it's just been, it's been ran in salt and all that good stuff, so or bad stuff. So, the back of this is all rotted out. Um, and there's one other major thing that I don't like about this, and, now, both the Tri-Pack and the uh, you know, Thermo King Tri-Pack and this carrier, they run off of the big engine, the main truck, uh, coolant system. So they run coolant, but they both have their own little radiator back here. Now this one has, this, is, this bolts on to the truck. So this backside is gonna be up against your frame, like your truck's long ways right here, essentially. And uh, I don't know, I, I don't know a lot about things maybe, but, uh, this radiator here, it, it isn't, uh, I don't think it's gonna be too effective, you know, in, in cooling anything. So you've had all that road grime and everything that's come off off of the road is able to get up in here. I mean, you can see this, uh, this is this, this dirt and grime and everything else that came off the road that's essentially just packed up in there. Uh, so not a very good design in my opinion, and when we look at the Thermo King back there, you'll see some differences, so needless to say. So, yeah, so basically this is, you got the uh, your little radiator in the back, which I don't like on this, and you can see why. I mean, like I said, that, that's, that ain't gonna cool anything the way that that is right now in that condition. Um, so, and then they got, they've got a fan up in front that isn't actually blowing against the radiator for this unit. Um, it's got a little louver, I guess, that kind of, I don't know, I guess it, I guess it's supposed to pull 
air one way or another. Um, yeah, I'm guessing it's going to pull air through, possibly, or either way. So it's supposed to pull air through, and I guess go through that radiator uh, one way or another. So, but uh, yeah, this it's just this thing is pretty pretty nasty here. So um, then there's the coolant line off the top. It goes in. So um, the one thing I do kind of like is this has a remote oil filter down here at the bottom. When you take that bottom uh, panel off, it's laying back there. Um, so the oil filter is easy to get to. Uh, fuel filter. I think it just had a little little inline filter back here somewhere. And then you do have a big, uh, looks like a big capacitor down here as well. So like I said, I'm not. I haven't worked on these a lot. Um, actually, I mean, at all. This is the first time I've, I've dug into a carrier. But um, I don't. I don't like what I see um, from the most part. So um, here's the top cover here. And this is that little louver that I was talking about. Um, and again, I don't have the inside unit because my customer um, they didn't get the uh, CCU unit that goes inside. But it's basically, like I said, an electric heat pump unit that can heat or cool. So it can, it can heat or cool electrically where you don't have to have that diesel burn in a bunk heater. Um, but again, like I said, you got a 6KW. This is basically just a 6KW generator is all this unit is out here. So, and actually, I was wrong. The, uh, this is not a, this is a fuel filter down here. That's not the oil filter. So the oil filter is actually right up here up front. So, so yeah, so you got the fuel filter here, oil filter down here on the engine. So right, right behind these wires there. So I was wrong about that. So I stand corrected before uh, I get attacked. <laughs> so this is basically, like I said, it's, it's a 6KW generator. Um, I think my opinion, the big alternator down there at the bottom is in a very poor position and the, especially that radiator back here in the back where you got all that road grime and no way for it to get out is in a very poor position as well. And not to say, needless to say, I should say, um, down where this is at, I don't, I don't think, you know, wiring electrical components mix with road grime, salt, brine and all that stuff. So. Um, with that, we're going to go back there and take a look at the, uh, the Tri-Pack Thermo King and uh, talk about the differences in it. All right, standing out here back with my T660, which I'm uh, still working on getting ready to sell and all that, putting the transmission in. Uh, so the Thermo King, it has a Yanmar two-cylinder diesel. Um, not a whole, I mean, a little bit of difference, but roughly the same size as the, uh, the Kubota. Uh, Kubota is pretty easy to get parts for for the most part. I, I've called a Kubota engine dealer. I get a rebuild kit for that little Kubota on that carrier for like $600 with tax and all that. So not too expensive. Haven't priced the Yanmars, but I would assume they'd be in about the same uh, ballpark, I guess. So the main difference with the two, the, uh, the Thermo King Tri-Pack, it has a AC compressor, which is going to be hard for you all to see here, but it, it's actually right down here at the bottom. And then it has an alternator, regular, uh, I, I believe it's a, uh, I think it's a 90, I think it's a 90 amp alternator on this one. Some of them do have a 140 or 160 amp. I, I can't remember off the top of my head right now. So there's two different styles and then they have two different size belts and all that. Um, so the Evolution, tri this is an older TriVac Thermo King. Um, the, the Evolution series, they're not a whole lot of difference. They're basically, the, the casing's a little bit different and the panel and size a little bit different. There's not, I mean, other than the engine mechanically, they're not much difference to them. Um, so with that, uh, you got oil filter right up front here, fuel filter right up here. Then there's another little inline uh, fuel filter back down in here, which is the one that usually gives people problems because they don't know it's there. Um, the other thing with that carrier that I didn't like is that, they had the air filter housing and air intake is down on the bottom. So, which I don't think is very smart to have it up here on top uh, to where it's not getting all that road grime and stuff. Now, the other thing I was talking about with that radiator, your uh, Thermo King here, it's got the radiator right up back here. So you can see as mine is not packed with road grime and dirt and everything because it's protected between the quarter fender here, you know, and the, and the, the base or the casing of the unit. So you're not going to get all that road grime from over here, you know, where, like with the carrier units. So it's a lot better design in my opinion. So, and this one actually has an electric fan, which 
I kind of like the idea of having a, if it had a uh, mechanical fan, belt driven fan like the other one did on this, but like I said, this is just something else electronic to go wrong, but it does have a uh, electric fan out here. But my, like I said, my, um, let's see here, that radiator looks a lot better than the one in that carrier over there. So, I mean, this is a couple of years newer, so it's not as old. Um, but again, so the main difference, like I said, with the, uh, between the two is that you got an electric AC generator on the carrier that powers a heat pump inside that can heat or cool. Now this unit, I believe they're right around 13,000 BTU, I think maybe 13.6 or something. Um, now, whereas the carrier is like 12,000 BTU, so you're, you're losing some BTU capacity uh, or some cooling capacity, but you do have the option to heat and cool with the carrier versus with, with the, uh, the Thermo King Tri-Pack here, you got to have one of the diesel bunk heaters. Now, I'll show you where the uh, pewter is. This is my panel in here, so it doesn't have any electronics outside there, so it's all in here. And you got this big, gigantic wiring harness that goes in here. And then, originally, I had an S-Spar heater in here where it's all off of one panel, and you could control everything off once, but I had those S-Spars, like a thousand, nine hundred or a thousand dollars, had trouble with mine and kept putting money into it, and I finally just bought one of these little cheap Chinese ones, which um, I did a video out, they're like 100, 150 bucks, and I just made a standalone system, and, and you know, my tri back still works st uh, with with uh, heating, or uh, sorry, cooling, um, but I've just just don't turn it on to the heating function, so I've kind of separated them myself. So, um, so yeah, I mean my uh, so I've kind of explained the two systems and gave you guys a walk around of them. Um, the carrier system, they're out the door installed. They're right around 11.5. Uh, the tri pack system with a heater and all that, you're right around like 13, a little over 13,000 for the units. So you're gonna pay about two grand more for the TriPak, Thermo King TriPak system. Um, looking at these two things, and I've looked at, I just looked at a brochure to get the specs off of the carrier. Um, from the Carrier Comfort Pro that I have sitting back here, uh, and the new ones in the pictures, it doesn't look like they've changed anything, guys. It doesn't look like they moved that radiator from the back. Um, it's still an alternator, an AC alternator down there that's sitting down and all that grime and everything else, water. Uh, so, I mean, if I was gonna buy the two brand new, I'd probably still go with the Thermo King, just this, this mainly because where everything's placed at. Now, the other thing, price point, that uh, if you start having trouble with that AC alternator in that carrier unit, uh, that thing's like $2,000 out the door. You know, they're like $1,800 plus tax. You're looking at like two grand to replace that. Whereas with this, if, um, AC compressor goes bad or something down here, they're like $400. Uh, alternator, you can get those aftermarket for like, you know, $150, $200, $300. Dollars. I think you can even get them from, from um, even if you have to get the, you know, the alternator through, through uh, Thermo King, I think they're three something roughly. So off the top of my head, the last time I priced them, I know everything's went up here this year. So, and again, there's a lot of other things. I just, I just think this is a better design system you know, the way everything's placed and that they don't have that AC, that APU control, that computer, it's not out here outside in the elements, it's actually inside. But uh, both of them, guys, I know we're doing a series on uh, rebuilding a, that carrier unit back there and I'm gonna turn it into an analog unit, simple AC system, everything manual, relay logic, get rid of the computers and all the nonsense. So if you're interested in that, you can check out that series. Uh, we're, just, we're just finished up part two on that. Um, so either way, down the road, you're gonna have problems with either one of these units. There's just so much wiring. Like I said, you can look at this harness in here. I mean, why do we need a harness? I mean, what is there, 25, maybe 25 wire, maybe, probably maybe 30, maybe 30 wire. What do we need all that for a simple AC system, you know, simple heating and cooling system? Um, and that's, I mean, some of the, yeah, some of that's for the cooling or heating on this as well. But it just seems way over engineered. It's just made, they're just designed to keep you in the shop. You know, they work for a while good, you know, well. And then, um, and it's just hard after a while. I mean, with these two, they, with the tri pack, I know, when you have a fault, you get a, you get a, um, an ACS or an AC5 fault, what it looks like. It looks like a five, but they call it the ACS code, or an ALT or X, upside down T and ALF fault code. So there's two different codes. The, uh, the ACS code basically refers to a fault in the 
AC system, compressor system somewhere, could be a low pressure sensor, high pressure sensor, something of that nature. And the ALT fault is something that's with the engine or wiring somewhere or sensors. So they're very vague as far as what those codes are and sometimes it can be really tricky to, to track those things down. And um, like I said, these are both mechanical engines. The only thing really electronic on them is uh, your on and off uh, solenoid here is really the only thing electronic on these engines. Other than that, um, they'll run just on fuel. I mean, you got a single wire oil pressure sensor down here, then you've got a, a single wire, uh, that's broke off, <laughs> uh, temperature sensor down here. So there is, um, that's looking at my arm, that's right down here. So if you can see that. So there's not, not a lot to these engines. So like I said, I'm doing a video series where we're stripping one of these down for a customer and gonna build a manual analog relay logic you know, on off, it works or it don't work type of uh, uh, heating system or cooling system. So, and then we're gonna put a standalone bunk heater in most likely. So uh, you can stay tuned for that stuff. But like I said, this is the differences between the two. And like I said, if I was to buy one or the other, um, I, the only advantage I see basically to that cure unit is that it's gonna, probably gonna be quieter because it's not, you don't have an AC compressor out here kicking on and lugging the engine down. It's pretty much gonna run consistent. Um, but with, with, with wiring, and uh, salt, you know, brine, water, the stuff doesn't mix very well out here on the road. I mean, even, you know, even if you got a generator sitting on the rain, that's one thing. When you get on a road with all that dirt that you saw in that carry unit and grime, and uh, it, it just, I just think it makes for problems. So, I mean, if I was to choose between the two, I'd probably go with the tri pack, you know. So, but like I said, we're going to try this other project out, and um, maybe that thing would take off, uh, and might have some people interested in, in doing the retrofits as well. So, Again, uh, guys, that's just uh, my two cents and opinion and uh, kind of going across the two. I mean, I'm sure other people have stuff to add as well. Um, so I don't, I don't know everything about them, but that's just, just looking at the two systems and knowing what I know about, like I said, definitely the tri -pack. I've been in and out to these, this, this particular unit and also the uh, Evolution. I've had the Evolution, which like I said, there's not a lot of difference between this unit and the Evolution. Um, like I said, the carrier is new to me, but um, right off the bat, like I said, that alternator thing and all the wiring, and that, that computer module being outside, that also kind of kind of red flags for me for the most part. So like I said, you don't, even with that central, uh, that inside unit, that uh, the CCU, uh, I, I see a lot of other issues with that as well, electronic that can go wrong. I mean, I was looking at the motherboards and all that when we were looking at rebuilding that other unit. And um, I just see a lot of extra problems, a lot of electronics and all that. Um, I'd rather have more stuff, more mechanical, in my opinion. So again, uh, I said that's pretty much my opinion and uh, what we got going on here so uh, stay tuned like i said uh, check out that new series we're doing on this uh, rebuild and retrofit um things will be pretty interesting be uh it'd be cool to kind of see how it turns out so it'd be the first one we've done but uh, again uh, guys uh thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't already hit the bell for the updates like the video uh if you're interested in the farming stuff which we kind of separate that stuff um or if you're new and you know we do farm too I uh, got tractors, animals, equipment, always working on something around here. We got a separate channel for that stuff now. And we always put the link in uh, on these videos in the description for that other channel. I always got people asking me about it, um, but we always put the link in, you know, for that other channel. So check that out as well and subscribe. Uh, again, guys, thanks for the uh, support. Uh, thanks for watching, um, you know, comment and all that stuff as well. We do the best we can to get back to you. And uh, again, thanks for everything. We'll see you next time.